Welcome to Spine Academy. In this video, we're going to review MRI imaging of the cervical spine. This is an excerpt from a broader course on cervical spine imaging. If you're interested in seeing the full course, we've left a link in the description. Probably the single most valuable study that you can get of the cervical spine is the cervical MRI. This is a sequence that really is good for identifying the spinal cord, spinal nerves, the discs, fluid, and other really soft tissue structures. So for example, if you look at this image here, this is a T2 sagittal sequence MRI. So we'll break that down a little bit. It's a sagittal sequence. That's, remember, a slice like this. It's an MRI scan, which is done on that detector in the small tube that you're kind of narrowly stuck in. It takes you like 45 minutes to get. It's a T2 sequence because it highlights very specific structures. So it's a T2 sagittal MRI. There's some structures you can identify that should look familiar to you at this point. So right in the front of the spine here, you can see this is the stack of blocks that make up the cervical spinal column between the blocks themselves. Like here you can see C3, C4, C5. Between those, you can see the discs, these little black or gray structures that are between them. That again is the spinal column. Right behind the spinal column, in the spinal canal, you can see here, here's the spinal cord. So the spinal cord, again, it's about the size of my pinky in real life, and it's surrounded by spinal fluid. So spinal fluid, or cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, we often will call that, is white on a T2 sequence. And here you can see it kind of at the bottom of the brain, surrounding the brain stem, and then down here, surrounding the spinal cord. So the spinal cord will typically have a cushion of fluid all the way around it, which is called CSF, which you can see here on a T2 sequence as white. And then there's the structures in the back, the spinous processes, some of the ligaments and stuff that you can see here. Now beyond that, you can see kind of this, the back of the neck, you can see some of the fat, some of the muscle over here. But if you were to take a single slice, and let's say you're looking at a slice right here, a single slice, it would look like this. So this is an axial sequence now, also of a T2 MRI, right at this spot. So this line right here will show you this is at C4-5. So what are we looking at here? Here we're looking at the spinal, we're looking again at a slice like this. You're standing at the feet looking up at slices, so the left side's over here, the right side is over there. You can see the spinal cord right here, and you can see the nerve, which would leave here on the left side, or the nerve that leaves here on the right side. Now that nerve that leaves there, you can actually see the nerve fiber sometimes. You can also see some fat and fluid around them. But when we're looking at an axial sequence, we're looking at the spinal cord, the fluid around it, and then the nerves as they leave right there. So now, neither of these sequences are single slices. When we're looking at a sequence like an MRI scan, we're looking at stacks of these images. So for example, if you look at this sequence right here, this is looking at the sagittal T2 sequence. This line right there tells you where that slice is. So you can see here, there's some joints in the back. Here you'll come up on the spinal cord again, the spinous processes over here. And you can kind of march from left to right through this axial sequence to look at the spine in multiple, like in one plane, but along multiple slices, all the way from right to left to understand the anatomy in three dimensions. So you can kind of paint a model in your mind for what it looks like just based on that. And similarly, just like this, you can also get a sequence called the axial sequences. And this is a nice picture again of the axial sequences as you roll through it. So this will show you the axial sequence, that line will show you where it is, and you can again march your way through it. So we're looking at the spinal cord right there, the nerves on the left, the nerve on the right there, and you can check out the spinal cord and the nerves, everything, one sequence, one level at a time to kind of look at all the way from top to bottom when you look at the stack of sequences. So between the axial and the sagittal sequences, you can really get a sense of not only the spinal cord and the spinal nerves, but the discs themselves and some of the structures around them. The one weak spot for an MRI scan is bony anatomy. You can't see it really that well on this. It's very useful for a lot of stuff, but not great for bone, which is what we're going to talk about in the next sequence when we talk about CAT scans. So those are normal MRI images, uh, and they're very valuable. We talked about sagittal and axial sequences, but if you look at this image here, this is a patient that I took care of, a very interesting young man who's a race car driver. And here you can see the sagittal T2 sequence with a fairly large disc herniation here. We come through the axial sequence, you can see it over there. This guy has a fairly large disc herniation pressing on his spinal cord and pressing on the spinal nerve there. You can see here how the spinal cord looks pretty good, but as you come up to this spot right there, he has a large disc herniation right on the right side there, causing pressure on the spinal cord. So looking at the axial sequences, looking at the sagittal sequences, we can really form a pretty good understanding of where the problem is that was causing him difficulty standing and walking, and then render the right treatment by going in from the front and taking out that disc herniation to free up the spinal cord and free up the spinal nerves so that he's back to racing cars once again. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. 
If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future content, we'd welcome them in the comment section below.